for seven years, or started my apprenticeship, so I guess had to be for about five of those. I really wasn't sure where I was going to go. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I had a bunch of drawings in a book. And then I think I bought my first tattoo magazine when I was about 13. And I think I, I was like in absolute awe of what I've seen. And at the time, it was great. I guess if you would see the same magazine now, it would probably be the absolutely terrible work. But then, yeah, I, that's absolutely what I wanted to do. From that point on, before then, I didn't know probably what every other kid wants to do in Nashville, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, and then I uh, brought a bunch of sketchbooks to, uh, now he's a really good friend, Bill, at Abstract Arts, and he seen something in there and uh, was willing to give all of his life secrets to show me how to do it. So I was quite grateful for that. I was 16. Well, minus the whole stick and poke thing, with like the whole home jobs, being curious about it. Uh, was probably this ginormous star, and at that time, I know my arms are very manly as they are now, but at the time it wrapped around way more because, you know, I was a lot smaller than that. So it was huge at the time, and uh, it was red, and now it's pink. So, yeah, it's faded quite a bit. That was my first one, and I thought my mom would kill me, but she didn't. When someone comes to me and says, I need a portrait of my mother who passed away, that is probably the most flattering thing anyone could ever ask me for, first off. And um, I think the amount of focus we need to put in that to make sure it looks like the person it needs to look like. If you put a cheekbone one millimeter off, it's no longer her.